all of your favorite recipes Simply Food You should know by now that you're in for a treat Simply Food There's no other channel where you'd rather be Simply Food Seafood, pasta, cakes, and pies Sing and laugh and even cry Like and share and hit subscribe Simply Food by T.Y. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Simply Food by TY, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a one-of-a-kind braised short rib ragu. That is sure to be a hit at any party coming up during this holiday season. So what we're focusing on right now is breaking down our large onion. Now, this is a sweet onion. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of just giving it a rough chop. You don't really have to worry about breaking this down into a mince too much only because this is gonna be cooking for so long that it's gonna break down naturally on its own. But you do kinda of wanna have all the pieces kind of consistent, kind of the same, just so that they kind of cook evenly. So like I said, I'm just giving this a quick little rough chop and that's pretty much it. Once you get that onion done, you can just go ahead and sit those to the side and now let's work on the garlic. Now I'm gonna be using anywhere between seven to eight garlic cloves. It just depends on, you know, how much you have once again. Give that a good chop. Once you do that, you can also sit that to the side as well. For this particular recipe, you wanna use as fresh of everything as possible. As you can see, I'm using some lovely carrots here. I have any, I think it's about eight or nine of them, I think. Um, I'm just chopping off the stems. I've already peeled them. And so what I'm gonna do is just to make sure that they're extra clean, after I give them a chop, I'm gonna give them another rinse. So first of all, make sure you're peeling them. And then of course, take off the stems on the ends. and then and you're gonna give these a rough chop as well. Now, I would say don't put any of this stuff in the food processor. It's just gonna break it down way too much. You do wanna be able to see the carrots in the final result, but you don't want giant chunks of carrots. So pretty much kinda how you see me chopping it up right about now is is a pretty good is a pretty good size just give it a slight rough chop and that's it you don't have to do too much but just make sure you give it an extra rinse just so that we can be sure that it is fully clean okay now let's talk about the star of the show now these are braid short ribs that i picked up from the organic butcher uh, market not far from me and as you can see, they are beautiful. The marbling is out of this world. They're 100% grass fed. They do cost a little bit of a penny, but when you're making a dish like this, you wanna use the best of the best, okay? Now, if you want it to be really, really meaty, I would say add on another, an additional three short ribs. I'm only gonna be using six. Um, and for me, it was just about right, but if you know you want yours extra meaty, add on three more, okay? So what we're doing right now is we're just making sure we're putting on some kosher salt and some crushed black pepper on all of the meat. You wanna make sure you're flipping it around, drag it all around that cutting board so that you can make sure that you are getting all of that seasoning up. One of the things about this recipe is you don't really have to put that many seasonings on it because it just doesn't require it. You know, it's gonna cook in a, in a good wine, you know what I mean? So you don't have to put too, too much on it. As you can see, I'm putting on some flour. You can also use cornstarch, that's completely fine. This is gonna help brown off our short ribs in a few moments. Do not put too much, just a light dusting as you can see. And you wanna make sure you just get um, them fully coated. And then I'm putting on, I would say anywhere between a tablespoon to two tablespoons total of uh, seasonal salt on those as well. Now in a nice hot Dutch oven skillet that is nice and hot, you're gonna add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and then we are going to just start browning these off. We're not trying to fully cook these right now, we're simply browning them off. Now I will say in order to get that really nice browning color on them, once you get them in the pan, leave them alone, okay? Wait till that color is really taking place and then give them a flip. I would say anywhere between I don't know, a minute to about a minute and a half. It really just depends on your pan, your stove top. Uh, but once again, you're not trying to fully cook them. You just wanna get this beautiful browning color like you can see right here on all of the sides and really make sure that you are flipping them around so that all of the sides can be nice and browned. And you're just honestly gonna repeat that process for all of them. Um, Make sure that all six are nice and brown. If you have to, you can add a little bit more oil, but you really shouldn't have to. There's enough fat um, in the marbling of the meat. I mean, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. That's gonna make a big, big difference. So don't skip that step, okay? Once you get that all done, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour in all of those veggies. So we've just poured in 
our carrots and our onions. Now you wanna get those to sweat down pretty nicely. You don't have to cook them down fully, but you know, decent enough. We're gonna add in some tomato paste. Now I'm gonna be adding in roughly about two tablespoons. You wanna create yourself a little well in the center of your pan just so that you can pour it in there. And the reason why you wanna put this in now and mix it in with your veggies is so that first of all, it'll really create a really bold tomato flavor, but also it's gonna cook off that bitter tomato taste, okay? So you really wanna let that cook, I would say anywhere between two to three minutes uh, make sure your, your pan is not up that high. You don't want to burn anything, okay? So, you know, just keep an eye on that. Uh, but you really want to let this cook. Um, you know, the, the longer you let this tomato paste cook in these veggies, the deeper that flavor is going to be in the overall dish. So that's important. Of course, you know, when you're making braised short ribs, you gotta add in some delicious wine. Now, I'm gonna be adding in... Um, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, for my wine, but as long as it's a dry red wine, you know, you're totally fine. Do not add a sweet wine, okay? And we're gonna add in, um, see, I'm so excited about the wine. I'm just jumping ahead, honey. I've added in a 12 ounce full can of crushed tomatoes. That's my favorite brand. That's just what I use. Um, now we're adding in the wine. See, child, I was so excited about it. Uh, we've added in two cups, and then we're also going to add in two cups of beef broth. Now, what I did for that was I used the Better Than Beef Bouillon. Um, I added in two and a half tablespoons, and then I filled up the measuring cup with two cups of hot water, mixed it up, and poured it in. If you don't like to use the Better Than Bouillon, you don't have to, but to me, I feel like it has a much better taste than that stuff that comes in the box. And now we're simply going to add our braised short ribs back in the pot. Make sure your oven has been preheated at 325 degrees. We're gonna add in a few sprigs of thyme, and then we're also gonna add in some bay leaves as well. You're gonna put the top on this and put this in the oven at 325 degrees for three and a half hours, okay? Three and a half hours. At that three and a half hour mark, as my God on to, do you see that? I mean, the coloring is beautiful. That tomato paste and that tomato sauce has really come through. Now, the reason why I took it out of the oven at that three and a half hour mark is just to give it a mix around, make sure nothing's sticking at the bottom, make sure everything looks good. When you put it back in the oven at this point, you guys, do not put the top back on it, okay? You're gonna put it back in the oven at this, at the same temperature, don't adjust the temperature, at the same, I don't know why I put the top back on it, but you don't put the top on it. You'll leave the top off, you'll put it back in the oven for an additional hour and a half, and as you can see, it's really reduced in the liquid as you look at the rim of the pan. Now you're gonna remove all of that thyme and the bay leaves, and this meat is so tender. The full cook time was roughly about four and a half hours. That last hour and a half, you wanna remove the top. Now in a separate pan, we're gonna um, start to shred the meat. And as you can see, those bones are just falling out. Now, if you really wanna step your game up, throw those bones back inside of the sauce while you're shredding your meat. The longer those bones sit in there, the more flavor it's gonna add, okay? Um, so what we're doing right now, like I said, is we are getting ready to start to shred the meat. Now for me, I don't like to have an excessive amount of fat in my um, final product. So I really take my time here while I'm shredding mine up. And if I see, you know, really, really large chunks of the fat, then I just simply uh, discard it. I don't use it. Um, but you can if you want to. I just prefer to not bite down into like a large piece of, you know, fat from the Bray Short Ribs. But as you can see, I mean, they have completely fallen apart and they are so tender so delicious at this point you can also taste for salt if you would like to add a little bit more but once again this is not one of those dishes where you need to add 50,000 different seasonings because it just doesn't require that and trust me the higher quality of short rib you get you won't need that much uh as far as seasonings so now that we got all of this shredded up beautifully what we're going to do now is we're simply gonna get ready to start adding this back into um, our sauce. Make sure that you guys have not turned off your oven, keep it on at 325, uh, because once we get all of our meat completely mixed in, then what we're gonna add in is our last two ingredients, which is butter. And y'all know, y'all, what am I about to say? Carry gold, honey. I added in about three tablespoons of carry gold, and I'm adding in about two, uh, well, I should say about one and a half cups of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. 
you got to use Parmigiano Reggiano. I promise you it'll make a big difference. Give that a good mix. Put that back in the oven for, I would say, about a half hour. It doesn't have to be that long. Now, if I were you, I would make this the day before. To me, this is one of those type of things that the longer it sits, the better it tastes. But it'll absolutely be delicious if you want to eat it on the same day. Now, in a large pan with about, you know, heavily salted water, we're going to um, use pepper deli is what I'm choosing to use. You can use whatever you want, but... You want a nice hearty pasta with this type of dish. And so when you're going to plate this up, you guys, don't mix all of the sauce in with your pasta. Do it like I'm doing and do it separately per bowl. That way you can really make sure that the plating will be beautiful and that you really have enough meat mixed in. And this is one of the also the reasons why you want to use like a pepper deli or a thick pasta because this is meant to be a hearty meal. You don't want some cheap, thin spaghetti pasta, okay? Let's work on the plating. So now I'm just gonna put a beautiful mound of this pasta and then you wanna make sure that you're adding a little bit more of the meat on the top. Then you're gonna top it off with some more of that Parmigiano Reggiano, some parsley, and that is it. Look, I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys tried this recipe. Once again, it will definitely be a hit around the holiday time. So y'all baby, stay cute and take care. Enjoy you guys, bye. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply food by TY. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply food by TY. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Simply food.